Welcome back everyone. I hope you're having a great day. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at a high dividend paying company that may be a great buy right now for some growing passive income. As the market trades near all time highs, it's getting harder and harder to find some solid blue chip high dividend paying companies. And in this video, we're going to analyze a stock that has a current yield above four and a half percent. They're trading at a very low valuation. And according to a discounted cash flow analysis, the stock is highly undervalued. So we're going to go over this company, take a look at their current operations, the future growth potential, the good and bad surrounding the business, and the current dividend and future dividend growth. But before we can do an analysis on the stock, I'm going to ask you to please hit that like button and subscribe. I'm the Gen Z investor and every single day we talk about the stock market, going over different stocks you can buy and any major market news. And of course today, the stock that we're going to go over is ticker ABBV, which is Abvi, a big pharma company that currently trades for $112 per share. And over the past year, the stock is up by 20%. The company has a market cap at $198 billion and they're trading with a very, very low Ford PE ratio of only 8.94. And relative to the overall market, there's a ton of value coming from Abvi at this current share price. And also, they have a nice high current dividend yield of 4.6%. And like I mentioned, as the market continues to trade near all time highs, it's getting harder and harder to find some good blue chip companies that provide such a high level of passive income. And if we take a look at Simply Wall Street, their platform is showing that Avi is currently trading for 50% below the estimated fair value per share of $225. This platform does a discounted cash flow analysis where they forecast out all of Avi's future cash flows and they discount them back to the current point in time. And when doing this, they believe the estimated fair value per share sits at above $225 and Avi's current share price of $112 per share would mean it's 50% undervalued. I personally believe these expectations are very bullish. I don't think the company's actually 50% undervalued right now, but I do believe they are trading below the estimated fair value when adjusting the metrics on the DCF calculation. So it may not be as undervalued as this platform is showing, but I do think at this current level for around $112, even though they have seen a run up as of late, there still is a lot of value coming from this big pharma player. And if we take a look at their latest investor presentation to get an understanding of their current business, they operate and sell products in four main categories, immunology, neuroscience, allergen, and hematology. And Avi has a nicely diversified portfolio of market leading products. They have the number one seller across five different consumer categories. And within each, they control more than 50% of the respective market share, which is incredibly impressive. And going forward over the longer term, all five of these categories are projected to grow every single year for long into the future. But Avi is not complacent. The company understands you have to continue to develop new products in order to stay on top, and they're doing just that. And two of their drugs that have a ton of potential over the next few years are projected to generate over $15 billion in combined global sales through 2025. So in four years from now, these two new products are projected to bring in over $15 billion in annual revenue. And that number is only expected to grow in the high double digits for many years after. So from 2025 to 2030, these two products are expected to generate a ton of sales for Avi. And these are not the only two drugs they have in development. Taking a look at their pipeline, they have so many different products in every stage. Phase one, two, three, and even submitted, they have goods across all six of their different targeted categories. And overall, Avi is one of the top research and development firms in the big pharma space. So I think over the longer term, the company will come out with new drugs every year. They're going to get more submitted, more approved, and the overall market will grow and Avi products will become a main player on a global scale. And of course, for many investors who know Avi's business, you understand that there's one key drug that drives a majority of the revenue that they will be losing the patent to by 2023. And of course, when that happens, that revenue is expected to go down and we'll discuss that risk later on in the video. 
But of course, Abby's a company that was spun off from their parent back in 2013, and since that point in time, they have delivered incredible results. Their total top line revenue has grown at a CAGR of 13.5% over the past 7 years. Their adjusted earnings per share is growing at over 18% every single year, which is absolutely phenomenal for a big pharma company. And since 2013, the total return from Abvi is 342%, including dividend reinvestment and all the share price appreciation, which is absolutely insane for a big pharma name in only a seven year timeline. And we can see that their quarterly dividend has grown 225% in total in the past seven years. 225% growth in your passive income if you bought this company right as they were spun out from the owner. And we can see at this current point in time, they have a nice high yield of 4.6%. Their pay it ratio is considered sustainable, coming in at only 41% of their net income. And their five year dividend CAGR is at over 18%. And since the company once spun off back in 2013, they have been growing that payment every single year. So fast forward to today, eight years later, their current dividend growth streak sits at eight years overall. So a nice high dividend company with a very low payout ratio that's very sustainable and some very fast dividend growth of over 18% per year. And taking a look at Simply Safe dividends, currently that dividend is considered safe coming in at a 70. And Avi recently received an upgrade to their score back on May 3rd, 2021. Their original score came in at a 50 and the dividend was considered borderline safe. But after the upgrade, they were improved to save and the score now comes in at a 70 and this was due to the company's ability to reduce some of their debt. And Avi has two key flaws with the business that we're going to discuss right now. So of course, seeing the market leading products, we're going to see the growing revenue on the income statement, we're going to see a lot of good things surrounding the company, but you always have to evaluate the bad because every company has some. And with Abby, they have a lot of debt on the balance sheet right now, and one of their key drivers of the total revenue that brings in around 40% of their sales, they're losing the patent protection on that starting in 2023, which is expected to hit the top line very dramatically. The key blockbuster drug Humira, which generates 40% of Abby's total revenue, loses its protection in the United States in 2023. And when this happens, the $16 billion of annual revenue that this one product provides for Avi is expected to be chipped away by their fierce competitors. And analysts are forecasting that the total sales from this product will drop 45% in the first year after the protection is lost, meaning Avi's total top line could decline by $8 billion or 15% of their current revenue. So of course that is a major risk you have to take into consideration when evaluating this company. But they believe that going forward, after the decline in 2023, the remainder of Avi's products will lead to continuous growth and the company will surpass where they were before they lose patent protection. And we can see that that's why the company has done a great job of preparing for this event. Because they know the erosion's coming in 2023, the company's been growing their dividend at a slower rate, they still grew it by 10% last year, but they no longer increased it by the 20 or 30% that we've seen in the past. So still a 10% hike is very high for a company that is showing a slowdown in their dividend growth. And they've also done a great job of bringing down their current ratio. From above 50% in years past, the current pay ratio sits at only 41% of their net income, which is on the lower level for a lot of big pharma companies. So they are expecting the earnings to be hit going forward, but the company's dividend, although the payout ratio may rise to around 50 to 65%, analysts are predicting that the company will remain to pay off their current level and actually slowly increasing it even during the years of reduced sales. That's because they're preparing for it now. They know it's coming. It's not a surprise hit to the company, and that's why they're bringing down that payout ratio at this current point in time. And going forward, like we saw, Avi is not going to be done after this protection runs out. Some investors steer away from this company as a whole because of the fear for 2023. But like we saw from their investor presentation, they have a massive pipeline of new drugs in development to help make up for the lost sales from Humira. And currently, there's two main drugs they see a lot of potential in from 2025 through 2030 and beyond. 
and by 2025, they're forecasting over $15 billion of revenue coming in from these two products alone. So if we take that into consideration, they're going to lose around $8 billion of revenue in 2023 to 2024. And if their analyst expectations are correct, if their forecast to come true, and these two new products bring in over $15 billion in 2025, they'll already surpass where they once were before they lost the protection. So that's why these analysts and Simply Safe Dividends didn't reduce the dividend safety score because of the risk. The company has new drugs in development that have already seeked some approval and will be hitting the market at a very fast pace over the next few years. And taking a look, more of Avi's products have been doing well after the pandemic. Their different allergen products grew about 30% of its total sales. Their Botox revenue is now 27% above the pre-pandemic level. So a lot of their product categories are still performing very well and the total revenue is growing year over year. And since their major acquisition that was worth tens of billions of dollars, they've seen $1.7 billion of synergy in 2021 and greater than $2 billion forecasted for 2022. And the company reassured their guidance for fiscal 2021. In their forecasting, 10% revenue growth with earnings per share expanding by 18% overall. So for a big pharma name that's currently valued at $200 billion to still grow their earnings by 18% year over year is incredibly good and very impressive from such a large scale business. And overall, Avi has done a great job executing their plan set out back in 2019. After the acquisition of Allergen, which I believe was a great deal for the company, they have seen their Humira revenue fall from 60% of total sales down to 40 so because they know they're losing protection, they're shifting away from that drug, building up their other product mix, and the total reliance on that one drug has gone down year after year to only 40% of the total revenue. Of course, that is a lot, and that loss of protection will hurt the company's total top line in a very strong way. It's nice to see that they have realized that and they're bringing down the weighting of that product to their total revenue. And they've also done a fantastic job of delevering the business in paying down debt and bringing that down to a safer level. Also, that new merger is paying off very well. The product mix of Allergen is working very well within the Avi ecosystem, and we're seeing some synergies from that new merger. As well, like we saw, the payout ratio has been declined to a much safer level, providing a greater margin of safety, and combined, the company is enjoying solid growth. So pretty much what they're saying is the fact that Avi has done a good job of reducing its debt level, although it's still high, it was much higher before and that level is coming down. And the company has done a great job of reducing their payout ratio. So the dividend is much safer than where it once was with a ratio above 55%. And currently sitting at 41, it leaves them enough room to maintain and grow that current payment, even if earnings see a decline due to the loss of protection in 2023. Plus, they're also showing that they have a nice diversified product mix coming out over the next few years. So when Humira loses revenue because of the loss of protection, their other products in development should help bring back the total sales and set new all-time highs starting in 2024 and beyond. So they believe the company's in a healthier position than where they once were, and that's why they see an upgrade to bring the dividend safety score all the way up to a 70, and it's now considered a safe rating. And next, we're going to go over Avi's key financial statements. And if we start off with the income statement, we can see that total revenue continues to grow year after year. Back in 2016, the company generated $25.6 billion in total sales. Fast forward to today, that number has now grown to over $50 billion in the trailing 12 months, meaning the company has close to double their total revenue in a five-year timeline. And for a big pharma company, that is absolutely remarkable. A lot of these stocks see flat or very single digit revenue growth year after year. So the fact that Avi has seen such a mass acceleration is extremely impressive. And although we are expecting a pullback in the total top line due to the patent expiring in 2023, it just shows that all their other products should be able to keep up with demand and help the company rebound after the big decline over the shorter term. And the fact that the company has doubled their total sales is very impressive and really shows that their other products in their market leading categories like we saw can still deliver growing revenue year after year. 
And if we take a look at the company's bottom line, they're profitable as well, with net income averaging between five and eight billion dollars over the past five years. And why this number fluctuates due to different expenses coming in at different points in time, with a research and development based company, some years have higher expenses than others and net income can fluctuate year over year, but overall the company does remain profitable with decent cash flow and net income coming into the business. And next, if we take a look at the balance sheet, that of course is where Avi does have a lot of weaknesses. Currently, their short term assets come in at $26.5 billion and the company's total current liabilities sit at 31.95 billion. So their current ratio is below one, which is not very strong over the shorter term. And we can see that the company has a lot of long-term debt that currently sits at over $74 billion. So right now, the company did pick up a lot of debt through their acquisition, but overall, we can see from that Simply Wall Street article, they have done a better job of reducing that number over the past two years, and going forward, management has a plan to bring the debt level down to a much more reasonable level. And if we take a look finally at the cash flow statement, that's another metric that shows that this company may be a great dividend play for some passive income. Because a dividend is paid out every quarter in the form of cash. So when evaluating a dividend paying company, a very important metric is their total free cash flow. And we can see on Avvi, the company's total free cash flow continues to grow year after year. From $9.4 billion in cash flow five years ago, that improved to 12, then 16, and now they have over $17.7 .7 billion of total free cash flow in the trailing 12 months. And this is the cash they can use to reinvest back in the business, pay out that dividend, grow that dividend payment, and also reduce their debt as it comes in. So this company does provide some great growing cash flow year after year as well, which is a very strong sign. So overall, the company's income statement is improving, their cash flow is very strong, they do have a lot of debt on the balance sheet, which is a red flag when evaluating a company, but like we saw, the management does have a plan to pay that down, and hopefully over the next five to 10 years, they can really bounce off the balance sheet, bring up the assets, reduce the liabilities, and create a much healthier company. And at this current point in time, Annals on Wall Street have ranked Avvi as a buy. They have the exact rating coming in at a two, and currently the share price of $112 sits below the share price expectation over the next year at $123 per share. So they are implying at least another 10% upside in the company's share price from their current level. So Avvi is definitely a high dividend paying company worth taking a look at, maybe for your own portfolio. Just remember, I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing we discuss in this video is financial advice whatsoever. I'm not making any recommendations. And of course, this is just for entertainment purposes. Speak with a qualified professional before making any investment decisions. But of course, if we recap what we've gone over today, Avvi's a big pharma player. They have some key products that dominate their respective industries. Revenue has been accelerating over the past five years. They pay a nice high dividend, a yield above 4.6%. The dividend's been growing at a very fast rate, and they actually saw an improved dividend safety score to a rank of 70, which is considered safe. But of course, we also went over some negatives. The loss of their patent will lead to a big decline in revenue for a key product, and the company does have a lot of debt on the balance sheet from their recent acquisitions. So you have to do some research into this company, like I mentioned, speak with a true qualified professional before making any buying decisions. But if you want some high current income from a company that's currently considered as a safe dividend payer, definitely take a look at Avi for your own portfolio. It might be a nice decision to collect some growing passive income every single quarter. So I wanna thank you for watching the video to the end. Please hit that like button and subscribe, and I will see you in tomorrow's episode.